So the next thing is AMGM. Uh, and I want to look at it this way. If you have some non-negative real numbers, A1 through AN, and suppose you have fixed their sum, say it's S, and you want to maximize their product. Um, and, you know, feel free, is there, uh, oh, is there a chat feature on, oh, okay, there is a chat feature. Oh, yeah, uh, you can feel free to, you know, put, if you have questions, feel free to, you know, put them in the chat or, or comment, or if I'm going too easy, if, it, if it's too easy, if it's too hard, you know, feel free to put comments in the chat whenever. Um, so yeah, so say you have some real numbers, A1 through AN, and you fix their sum, and you want to maximize their product. So, um, so you know, maybe a reasonable, if, if you play around with some examples, you could see that moving numbers closer together sort of seems to increase, um, their product and moving them farther apart sort of seems to decrease their product. So you might want to conjecture that the maximum is achieved when all the numbers are equal. And well, I'll say S over N equals M, the mean, the arithmetic mean of the numbers. So uh, so we want to prove that the maximum is m to the n, which is achieved when they're all equal. So we want to prove that their product is at most m to the n. Uh, and so this is basically the AMGM inequality. Normally you would write it as, you know, with nth roots, but this is what's going on. You would write it like this, and, and this is useful in all sorts of inequality problems. But let's let's you know take a minute or two to focus on what's you know really underlying this. So you have this. So let's prove this. Um, now there are a lot of ways. There's more than one way of proving this. There are quite a few ways of proving this. Uh, and so uh, one way. So you might have seen some proof of this before that that has like some weird way of doing it where you like induct on powers of two and then you go backward to induct down to cover all the gaps in between. Some weird complicated proof, uh, but there's no need to do that. We can just prove this by straight up induction. Uh, so base case, I guess, n equals one is trivial. Um, or not even trivial, it's just like clear when n equals one. So now let's do the inductive step. So what we're going to do is sort of this nice idea that shows up in various inequality problems where you sort of can move the variables around to improve what you're trying to show. So what we're going to do is among the an, we're going to take the largest one and take the smallest one and move them closer together without changing their sum. So, okay, let's say a1, assume without, since it's all symmetric, we can make some assumptions. So assume without loss of generality that a1 is the largest and an is the smallest among the AIs. Or at least, you know, tied for largest, tied for smallest, whatever. You know, you could just say, assume without loss of generality that A1 greater than or equal to A2 greater than or equal to A3 all the way to AN. We only need the largest and smallest thing. So let's assume that. Now, let's take a look 
at if we replace a1 and an with so we want to replace them with two numbers with the same sum as they originally had and if we want to make it easy easier for the induction um, you can just re it, it would be nice to replace one of them with n so let's look a1 times a n let's think about replacing them with m and a1 plus a n minus m now notice this minus this is a1 times m times a n minus m uh, So since a1 is smaller than, since a1 is less than or equal to all the, all the AIs, a1 minus their mean is less than or equal to zero. Similarly, a n, or sorry, no, no, no. a1 minus their mean is greater than or equal to zero. a n minus their mean is less than or equal to zero. So this product is less than or equal to zero. Great. So we can say this, meaning so we have this a1 times a n less than or equal to m times, you know, a1 plus a n minus m. So basically we take the largest and the smallest and we move them somewhat closer together. And now this will let us induct down because now look at this. We have n minus one real numbers. Um, and what is their sum? Their sum is the sum of all the AIs, which is S minus M. Which is equal to n minus one times M, meaning their mean is M. Meaning by the inductive hypothesis, their product is at most m to the m minus one and so we're just done so basically what you you can think of this as what you can think of this as happening is like when you have um a bunch of number non-negative real numbers i guess i should have noted that here when you have a bunch of non-negative real numbers um, and you want to maximize, if you fix their sum, then maximizing their product means making them all equal because um, informally you can think of it as just moving them closer together increases the product. And so you just sort of move them one by one to, to the mean and you just, Repeat, if you repeatedly do that in the right way, you just get what you want immediately. And so, uh, anyone, should I go over?